Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Kevin Cornwell and welcome back to the Vision Refocus channel. Today I want to talk about the importance of having your eyes dilated. I want to discuss the reasons why this is an important part of a comprehensive eye exam regardless of your age, family history, and whether or not you're having any symptoms with your eyes or vision. Let's get started. So what does it mean to have your eyes dilated? Basically, this is the part of the eye exam where your eye doctor checks the health inside your eyes for any eye diseases or abnormal findings. It requires the use of special magnifying lenses, lights, and a microscope. Many patients do opt out of this part of the exam as it does require additional eye drops to be used, which can cause their eyes to be sensitive to lights and their vision up close to be blurry for several hours afterwards. These eye drops temporarily relax the iris muscle, which is the colored part of our eye, thus dilating the pupil. The pupil is like the window to the back of the eye, and when it's dilated, your eye doctor is better able to assess the structures inside your eye and rule out any sight-threatening eye conditions. These include glaucoma, cataracts, macular degeneration, and diabetic retinopathy, as well as any retinal abnormalities, such as holes, tears, or detachments to the layers of the back of the eye. Even certain types of brain tumors can be detected on a routine dilated exam. And what's crazy is that in the early stages, a lot of these conditions may not cause any visual symptoms to the patient at all, and will only be detected on a routine dilated exam. In some cases, children and young adults will naturally have larger pupils, and additional dilating drops may not be necessary to assess their ocular health. However, some children with high undetected glasses prescriptions will still likely require the dilation drops. Since children have such a strong ability to focus and accommodate their eyes, the dilation drops are usually necessary to relax the focusing muscles of the eye. This allows for a more accurate and objective assessment of a child's glasses prescription. Some children may be required to wear glasses full-time to prevent a condition called amblyopia. This occurs when a child's eyes are unable to send a clear image back to the brain, either from having an uncorrected glasses prescription or from having a lazy eye that doesn't focus properly. The connection between the eye and the brain typically stops developing around eight years of age. When amblyopia is left untreated, the brain gets used to seeing a blurry image and the child will grow up with permanently decreased vision in the affected eye. This is why we recommend kids have their eyes checked as early as three years of age to rule out conditions such as amblyopia. Sometimes patients will try and opt out of having their eyes dilated and instead choose to take a photograph of the back of their eye with a special camera. While various retinal cameras do exist, they should not be used as a substitute for having a thorough dilated exam. There are also numerous limitations to these cameras capturing a quality image of the eye. These can include a patient's eyelashes, smaller pupils, dry eyes, or even cataracts. Even best case scenario, the manufacturers of these cameras will say that with the current technology, they're unable to capture the full surface area of the retina, that which can be seen with the dilating drops. So is there anyone who shouldn't have their eyes dilated? Generally speaking, most people should have their eyes dilated at least once every few years. If your eye exam is unremarkable for any abnormalities, it may not be necessary to repeat this portion of the exam every year. Also, women who are pregnant or nursing typically won't have this portion of the exam done either. The eye drops required for dilation have not been thoroughly studied in this demographic. To my knowledge, no serious adverse reactions have been reported. Nonetheless, we still wait till next year's exam to perform the dilation on these patients. There are several concerns patients have with having their eyes dilated, primarily with their ability to drive home after their exam, as well as to read up close, whether they wanna read a book or to check their cell phone. Most patients are able to drive home after their exam without any problems. The use of sunglasses will be necessary. Also, patients who feel more comfortable can also bring an additional person with them to their exam to drive them home afterwards as well. So if you're nearsighted and you've just had your eyes dilated, you can usually get away with just removing your contact lenses or taking off your glasses to see clearly up close. This is good to know in case you wanna check your phone after an exam or if you wanna go look at new frames for your next pair of glasses after you have your eyes dilated. People who are farsighted typically are affected more so for reading and will have a harder time checking their phone or looking at new frames for their next pair of glasses after their dilated exam. In these cases, those of you who are farsighted can ask your eye doctor to temporarily put in soft contact lenses to improve your near vision after the dilation. These will need to be removed before you leave the office. However, these can make the glasses selection process a lot easier for you. Just an idea. So there you have it. I hope you now have a better understanding of why you should have your eyes dilated and why this is an important part of a comprehensive eye exam. 
In the same way you wouldn't visit your dentist and not expect to open your mouth, you shouldn't visit your eye doctor not expecting to have this portion of the exam performed. For more videos on eye disease with actionable steps on keeping your eyes healthy, be sure to check out the other videos on our channel and consider subscribing. We're putting out monthly videos in English and in Spanish, so stay tuned. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.